Nobody contacted me until the chaplain called and to ask where he was going to be buried now and, and give his condolences. That's it. That's the only contact that I have had with them people. The warden was in control totally. I was told he was a ward of the state and either I do what they said or I didn't get to see my son. EC the boys, Alabama Prison Profiles. What's going on with y'all, man? Make sure y'all like, sub, share, comment on the video, donate to the Cash App and PayPal if you're feeling generous, man. Hit that join button, become a member of the channel, man. All right, now, Bird told me as soon as Pick got the reception, a little bit of time passed, and they came and locked him up and sent him to segregation. Allegedly, upon speaking with staff, he was informed that several slips had been dropped on him within a matter of hours, and he has 12 documented enemies at the facility from past bids and or people just catching out of his on his name, right? Pure comedy. I know some of y'all want bro to be a host so bad, but bro about that, I'm sorry, man, like... Now, at this time, I still hadn't spoken with him because he likes to call me when I'm at work, but I will update. Now, today, we have a family who's to settle the lawsuit with the State and Department of Corrections for, an, in my opinion, not enough amount of money for the death of their loved one at the hands of officers. Let's hop right into that right now. November 2022. I knew what had happened to him by looking at him, Sandy said. They beat him so badly, his head was misshapen. He looked like an alien or a monster, unquote. A her spokesperson for the Alabama Department of Corrections said the agency's internal investigation into the incident is still underway, but it will be referred to the district attorney for grand jury placement in the coming weeks. This spokesperson also said one officer involved in the incident has resigned. The others are still working for the Alabama Department of Corrections. On October 4th, Sandy received the call her son had been airlifted out of Donaldson Correctional Facility in Bessemer with critical injuries. She rushed to UAB Hospital, where she saw her son before he was removed from life support. Sandy said Stevie, as she called him, was unconscious and unrecognizable. Doctors told her he'd been beaten. Quote, I assumed other inmates had done it, she said. Quote, I would never have thought officers would have done that. They're supposed to be there to protect them and make sure everything runs right. While at the hospital, Sandy said she spoke briefly on the phone to the warden of Donaldson Correctional Facility, Gwendolyn Gibbons. Quote, I asked her what happened to my son. And she would only say there's an investigation and she couldn't make any statement or give me any information, Sandy remembered. It's been over six weeks since Stephen Davis died. Sandy hasn't heard anything about the investigation in her son's death or any measures the department is taking to hold someone accountable. Quote, nobody has called, Sandy said. Quote, it's like it didn't happen. Like he wasn't even there. I don't want Stevie to be forgotten. Stephen was pronounced dead on October 5th at UAB Hospital. His family had to raise money to pay for his funeral. Just last weekend, they placed his headstone at his grave in Uniontown, Alabama. Multiple sources said officers beat Stephen inside a, quote, behavior modification unit or, quote, hot bay at William Donaldson Correctional Facility. It's unclear why Stephen was placed inside this unit, but sources said he'd been transferred to Donaldson from Bibb Correctional Facility in the days leading up to his death. Quote, behavior modification units or hot bays were cited in the recent Department of Justice investigation in Alabama prisons as particularly violent. The report described the units as places where prisoners are disciplined for drugs or violence. They, quote, are not allowed to leave the dormitory for meals or the canteen line, are not given a microwave or television, or allowed to attend any outside programs or jobs, unquote. 
The Department of Justice report includes a narrative about several horrific incidents that took place inside the, quote, hot bay at Bibb Correctional Facility. Quote, since we inspected Bibb and informed the department of our initial findings that the hot bay was critically dangerous, the hot bay at Bibb has been closed. But, quote, behavior modification dormitories continue to operate at other facilities, the report states. The department issued a news release on October 7th that stated Davis's death was under investigation. It framed the incident according to correctional officers involved as one in which officers felt threatened by Davis. Quote, two Donaldson correctional officers say inmate Davis rushed out of his cell brandishing one prison made weapon in each hand and attempted to strike an officer. After repeated verbal commands and the use of standard methods to disarm the inmate, Davis refused to comply. At that time, correctional officers applied physical measures to defuse the threat in order to remove the weapons from the scene and secure the inmate. When Sandy read the account from the department, she laughed. Stevie was not an instigator, she said. He was a follower. Quote, this sounds like something out of the wild, wild west, she said. Quote, Stevie was in a confined area. He wouldn't create an altercation. He didn't want to die. He was coming home to take care of me, unquote. Multiple sources who witnessed the incident disputed the department's claims. They said Davis dropped his weapons and officers rushed him, not the other way around. Stephen Davis was in prison on a probation violation related to drug charges. In 2009, he pled guilty to a fatal robbery in which he drove a vehicle involved in the incident. He served five years and was released on probation, but was sent back to prison for possession of a controlled substance. Since Stephen Davis died... His mother's grief has gotten worse, not better. Sandy said she's left messages for the warden at Donaldson, but no one has returned her calls. She's also been confronted by negativity on social media. Quote, it's hard not to be upset when you see comments from people who think it's okay to be graped or killed in prison, she said. I would just say to everyone, this could be your son, this could be your nephew, brother, uncle, or father. I never would have thought this would be me. I want Governor K. Ivey to tell me why my son is dead. The Davis family will go on to sue the Alabama Department of Corrections and the state for a wrongful death claim. October 2024, present day. The Alabama Department of Corrections has settled a wrongful death lawsuit against corrections officers who beat a man to death at William E. Donaldson Correctional Facility in 2019, though the department continues to deny officers used excessive force. A settlement payment of 250 rackades was issued on August 16th in the case of Sandra Ray v. Roderick Gadsden et al., according to the data from Alabama's D Department of Finance. Before reaching the settlement, the state paid 11 different attorneys or firms a total of $393,000 to defend the corrections officers named in the lawsuits, the records show. Ray filed a lawsuit in 2020 after the October 2019 death of her son, Stephen Davis. The day before he was removed from life support, Davis, 35, was rushed to UAB with critical injuries after an incident involving multiple officers inside a, quote, behavior modification unit or hot bay at Donaldson Prison. Medical examiner justifies Davis' death as a homicide caused by blunt force injuries of head sustained during an assault, unquote. Ray reached by phone had no comment on the lawsuit or settlement agreement, but said nothing will ever heal the grief she experienced in losing her son five years ago. Quote, it never leaves you, she said. If they hadn't killed him, I wonder if he'd be here right now helping me. I wonder if he'd have kids. What they took from me will never go away. The Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall declined to press criminal charges against the officers involved. The department's internal investigation determined the officers' use of excessive or use of force against Davis was justified. Criminal investigation began in Bessemer District Attorney's Office in 2020. Bessemer DA recused her office when she learned one of the officers involved in Davis's death was related to an assistant prosecutor in Bessemer. At that point. The criminal investigation was transferred to the Attorney General's office, and we all know what they do with shit. Hank Sherrod, an attorney representing Ray, said in a statement that the Department of Corrections and the criminal justice system failed to hold anyone accountable. Quote, Sandy would train every dog to have her son back or to see the officers who unalived her son go to prison. But she is glad to close this chapter in her life. Unquote. The statement said four officers were named in the lawsuit. 
two of them still working for ADOC as of this month. According to payment records available in the Open Alabama Checkbook database maintained by the Department of Finance, the department confirmed the two officers were still employed by the department, did not respond to a request for comment on the lawsuit settlement. From the beginning, the department framed the incident that led to Davis' death as one in which officers felt threatened by Davis, an account disputed by Ray and some witnesses. A statement DOC released two days after Davis' death said Davis rushed out of his cell brandishing a prison-made weapon in each hand and refused to comply with officers' demands to drop his weapons. At that time, correctional officers applied physical measures to defuse the threat in order to remove the weapons from the scene and secure the inmate, the statement concluded. But the civil complaint filed by Ray stated the officers brutally beat Davis, ultimately killing him, and therefore subjected him to excessive force, violating his constitutional rights. The complaint disputed the account by the department saying Davis dropped the weapons and submitted to officers, but they still beat him, striking him in the head with batons and stomping on his head. Quote, the blows to Davis's head are considered deadly force and would have been excessive even if Davis was resisting the officers. The complaint argued. The DOJ released a report in July 2020 concluding officers within the DOC frequently use excessive force on men housed throughout the Alabama prisons, giving rise to systematically unconstitutional conditions. While not naming Davis, the report described his death. It stated that he had initially rushed toward another prisoner, not officers, and that an officer sprayed him with a chemical agent and struck him on the arm, causing him to drop a weapon. Quote, a second correctional officer responded to the scene and administered palm heel strikes to the prisoner's head as well as knee to head strikes as he tried to disarm the inmate, the report stated. The prisoner eventually went to the ground face down and officers reported that the prisoner concealed a knife between his upper torso and the floor. Numerous prison witnesses, however, reported that correctional officers continued to strike the prisoner after he dropped any weapons and posed no threat. Davis was in prison on a probation violation related to drug possession, blah, 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 robbery, killed several days after being transferred to Donaldson from Bend County. After her son was killed, Ray spoke to lawmakers about her family's experience, telling them she had to have a closed casket at his funeral because of the severity of his head and facial injuries. She continued to speak publicly about the lack of transparency by the Alabama Department of Corrections, generating national media coverage of the incident in the years following Davis's death. Well, the next morning, they threw everyone out after they found out that a guard had done it. They started to, I guess, went into protection mode. Stephen was on life support mode and pronounced him dead at 1038 that morning. What I hope will come out of this is that when incidents happen in these prisons, the outside investigators are brought in and, and they are the ones that tell the story. They have to answer to somebody besides ADOC. I want to see them pay charges be brought against these correctional officers, and I want to the, see the conditions in the prison change. If you don't have money, your son, daddy, cousin, nephew, whatever, they can even get a bar of soap. Steal soap and get assaulted, or steal toothpaste and get assaulted. It's the vicious circle that we've been in right now forever and ever and ever. We've got to come out of that circle. It's got to be broken. And there y'all have it, man. Crazy, man. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comments, man. Ain't it crazy how the department paid the lawyers almost double what they did to defend these officers, you know what I'm saying, than what they settled with the family for? Man, what type of message says it, man? It ain't enough money, but it's a start and a step in the right direction as far as holding the department accountable if the state ain't gonna do it. Now, playing devil's advocate for the department, if bro did have two knives and rushed out of the cell at them like they claim, hey, do what you gotta do to disarm the offender. You know what I'm saying? In the words of former Alabama CEO, the corrupt author, if you get, get if you get aggressive, you could expire. We talk things out, right? But once again, who knows why Mr. Davis was pushed to this point where he felt allegedly stabbing officers was the solution, man. Y'all see the inmates, of course, dispute the department's claim, saying he dropped the weapons and proceeded to get his ass whooped still. That one ain't resigned for nothing, man. Already, the ones still working, man, they, hey, they need to, hey, they might, feds might pull back up, you know what I'm saying? The department denying excessive force for wrongdoing 
and the attorney general stamping that shit when an inmate death happens at the hands of officers isn't diabolical it's maniacal I don't give a damn what the inmate did let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section man like subscribe share donate to the cash app and paypal if you feeling generous hit that join button and become a member DC The Voice Alabama Prisoner Profiles 